Glossy black cockatoos start breeding in late January, so that's when the first eggs are laid. We've been monitoring the nest trees monthly, so we know how big the nestlings are. We've got a big, long pole cam that we can put up and see exactly how big the nestlings are, what stage the nest is at. One of us will climb up the tree to retrieve the nestling, so we'll get it out the nest box, put it in a bag, we'll send it down the tree on a rope. So when we get them out, they've never seen anything outside of a nest box ever. Um, all they've seen is their mum coming in to feed them. So they do look a bit shell-shocked. Um, they spend a lot of time just gazing around. <laughs> They were critically endangered at one stage when they were down to that 150. With the population increase, they've been downlisted to endangered, but I mean, there's still about 400 individuals total in the world, so that's a very small population. So we measure their top beak, which we call the Coleman, so from top to bottom. Um, and we also measure their folded left wing. So we basically just pull their wing out and it's from that first joint down to the tip of the feathers. And basically feather development happens quite rapidly, so you get quite a good uh, measurement of age from that. What we're trying to do is actually put leg bands on as many as we can, so that we can um, trace them throughout their lives. Leg bands are such a fantastic way to collect data. We've still got birds out there that were banded in the late 1990s, which is when banding started, and they're still around and still breeding. We try and ban them at five to eight weeks of age. That's sort of ideal because they're not so big that they're going to be a flight risk, but they're you know, big enough that their leg is quite fully formed and we can put that band on without a risk of it slipping up. It's you know, amazing going out to these incredible places and we're really lucky that we've got such great landholder support. We've got over 100 landholders now that we either plant trees on or we access their properties to do census surveys or to maintain nest boxes and they're just so supportive. Without their support we wouldn't actually be able to protect this much of the population.